I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Nokia, after months and months and months, have finally released their first two Windows Phone 7 devices. One's a Nokia Lumia 710 and the other one is the Nokia Lumia 800. Now this bad boy isn't coming to the US, but it's going to be available in a bunch of other countries starting this month and then rolling out again to some other countries in December. Not quite coming to the US, though Nokia says next year is the year for Windows Phone 7 devices in the US. Let's take a look at this though and see if this is the device you should get. Maybe you should even unlock it and bring it over into the States. We'll find out in the full review of the Nokia Lumia 800. But first, gonna give some love to my boys at Best Buy Mobile because they hook us up with a lot of phones for use in our Wampaw Bandy game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, they'll help you with regardless of whether it's AT&T or Sprint or Verizon or T-Mobile, they're unbiased. They'll help you not only walk out working, but they'll help you with unbiased advice and more at Best Buy Mobile. Enough of that, let's get into it. Full review. So we covered Nokia Drive and Nokia Maps in part one, but part two, I want to show you Nokia Music. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to make it to the U.S., uh, at least on the U.S. branded Nokia Windows phone devices, and I actually don't know why it's not opening, period. That's very strange. Let's see if we can get it to open. Oh, that's strange. Well, again, you know, of course, we're dealing with a pre-release device right now. But Nokia Music was intended to be an application, or is intended to be an application, that helps you sort your music all into one convenient place, and download music, and more. They showed it off at Nokia World, and uh, it is coming to the devices that come to the UK and come to these various countries across the pond, if you will. But I don't know if that'll come to the US based on our current music law. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But we'll take a look at Internet Explorer. Kind of frustrating that that doesn't come up. We'll load up PhoneDog.com. Look at this. It's loading up right now. Now, of course, no flash in Windows Phone 7.5 either. So page loads pretty quickly. And pinch to zoom is incredibly responsive. Downside is you don't get flash. Maybe an upside, you don't get advertisements on sites. Uh, which is a pretty cool image. You can see pinch to zoom just incredibly responsive, follows right along with your finger. And for example, I can zoom in or focus in here and see skeptical of iPhone 5, and you can see the transition effects are nice again. You know, like I said in part one, this transition effects kind of fool your eye into thinking that uh, it's a little bit faster than it actually is. You look at the transition, I'm like, that's a good, you know, two second transition time, if you will. But that little transition effect it does fools your eye into thinking, well, this is a little faster than uh, I thought it was going to be. But you've got your refresh button down here, and you'll notice in Mango, the, uh, the browser bar goes down to the bottom, so you can see that. And then, of course, tabs, recent, favorites, add to favorites, share page, pin to start, settings, and more. So I can pinch to zoom in and out again. Very responsive with little to no lag uh, on the browser. So if you're looking for a great web browsing experience, Windows Phone does do a good job, but again, it doesn't have flash, so that's going to, uh, going to be a struggle. Another thing I found particularly interesting on this device, they recommend the YouTube application, but you can see here, we'll click on it. It takes you right to the mobile page, which I thought was particularly Interesting. It does not uh, give you customized application, but rather, it, like I said, it takes you to the mobile page, which I thought was kind of interesting. So we'll load up Old Man Baker here and show you what the email looks like. So if you're coming into Windows Phone for the first time, perhaps, or you know, haven't looked at it in a while, there's some minor changes, nothing really huge here. You can see all unread, urgent, and I can scroll over in any application. When I see this text at the top, I can scroll back and forth by clicking or by uh, just scrolling from left to right, for example. So all unread, urgent. I only have one message in here right now. But you can see getting started with Windows Phone 7, and you can see how quick and easy it is to open up. And then I can go from back and forward within my inbox. I can delete it. I can reply. And I can mark as unread, and I can move. So a couple different options from the inbox again. And if you do have pictures in an email, you can click those. It'll allow you to download. Uh, for your safety, by default, it does not allow you to uh, download pictures, or it warns you, I should say, before you download pictures. And I'll show you the marketplace as well just while we're going through some of these applications. And, you know, AT&T App Center popped up, which I found particularly interesting. And I actually, it's been so long since I've worked with a Windows phone device, I can't remember if that pops up based on your SIM card or if that pops up, which kind of made me think maybe they're testing Lumia 800, but I'm 99% sure it pops up based on your, uh, your SIM card. But again, AT&T App Center uh, did pop up a couple of days after I put in the micro SIM card. So apps, games, music, podcasts. And you can see the apps over here, games, and I can scroll over and kind of separate uh, Kick Messenger. I can go into apps, for example, or I can search. So let's search, for example, for Twitter, and it'll bring up apps and games. I can search music, podcasts, app, well, back to apps and games. So you can see Twitter. Here's the official application. So here's what a page looks like. You'll see the icon, you'll see the name, and you'll see the star rating. You can see some details on it. I can share it. I can see the reviews here, and I can scroll over to see all the different details, reviews, screenshots, related, more details about it. And of course, I can share it uh, with my friends. So we can go into oh, Angry Birds Uncovered, for example. We can go in here and say, oh, it's a help app for Angry Birds. Excuse me, reviews, screenshots, 
Shows what the screenshots look like. And uh, you can output that in landscape mode, install and share, and then related and, uh, and more. So, you know, improvement, I believe last time I checked, there are just under 20,000 applications. I want to say it's 18 or 19,000 applications uh, in the uh, Windows Phone marketplace. But still, you know, noble start, but again, they're pretty well far behind Android, which I believe is just at 300,000 or just crossed 300,000, and the iOS, which is rumored to be at uh, 500,000 in their app store. So, well behind, but still 18,000, a good start. My hope is that with Nokia devices coming, they'll be able to woo some developers over to the platform and, uh, and use their bargaining power since they are a relatively big, uh, relatively big company. Now, one thing I didn't like about this phone, and this is something Stephen Elop touted uh, all throughout the presentation, the camera. It has an 8 megapixel camera with 720p HD video recording. I'm going to take the Droid Razor here and use it as an example. We're just kind of disappointed in the camera. Now, what I do like, I do like the interface on Windows Phone. I do like the fact it has a physical button and then uh, how easy it is to access settings. It's just a very easy to use application, but I just was not impressed with the picture quality, which is interesting because it is using a Carl Zeiss lens. So we'll bring up the Droid Razor here, for example, and you can see, go over here, and we'll bring up the Verizon logo, for example. And let's see here. Take a picture. So you can see how blurry that is. I'll take a picture of a contact lens box, you can see there. Uh, but you see how blurry it is. Motorola logo is very blurry. Verizon is very blurry. Now let's try bringing it out a little bit and uh, taking it again, maybe from this angle. So you can see it, it zooms in, half press to zoom, full press to take the picture, and you can see it's legible. But again, I've definitely seen much better 8 megapixel picture quality from something like the HTC Resound or the iPhone 4S or the Droid Razor here. So it's kind of disappointing to see the, uh, the camera quality. I've not been impressed with it. Also, battery life has been relatively decent. I will say it's uh, definitely a decent battery. With moderate use, you know, I've done some text messaging, some calling, I've downloaded apps, I've browsed the web, and I've been able to make it. Uh, just about 11 hours before the device requires a recharge, somewhere between 10 and 12, depending on my use that day. So you may have to charge at least once throughout the day, but it does charge relatively quickly. And of course, it's a standard micro USB charging port. So uh, you know you should have access to those, be it in your car, be it in your office. Maybe somebody has a micro USB charging cord, or uh, wherever you're at. So it's a relatively you know standard charging cord. Though I will say the battery life uh, isn't quite where I wanted it to be. I was hoping to get a little bit more out of it, but still, again, not bad. Uh, given the form factor of this device and the fact that it's still a very svelte, thin device. But anyway, disappointing the camera, thought that was particularly interesting. Uh, 720p, I haven't gotten anything on the YouTube channel, but it does look decent. Sound quality sounds okay, and then, uh, uh, and then picture quality is decent as well. So something that was particularly interesting, because I was really hoping it'd be good. I hope they'd round out the package with, uh, with an excellent camera, but unfortunately, it, uh, it seems to be a little bit subpar. So here's Microsoft Office, and you can see like any other Windows Phone device, you've got OneNote, you have Excel, you have Word, and then PowerPoint, and then over here, uh, like I said, OneNote kind of separates it away because it's notes and then your documents uh, over here, and they're color-coded based on their color coding in Microsoft. So I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this video. Color coding based on their color codes. That's pretty, uh, pretty evident there. We can explore Word, for example. We can open it up, and uh, how do I get started? I can come down here and edit this document. Or I can go back and I can uh, come into Excel, for example, and it gives me these tips on how to explore the various applications and I can come down here, I can comment, of course, this is actually an Excel document, so I could actually change this if I wanted to. But I can go back to Word and then click Add or Add a OneNote, and I can go back to Excel, see that, and I can add, let's do a new Excel blank spreadsheet. So you can see right here which with my terrible spelling, and then of course I can access, I wonder how, yep, yeah, I can do that, cool, okay. Kind of spread the stuff out here, I don't really know how well this is gonna work, or if it'll work at all, based on pinch and zoom, but you can see there's my, my text, so you can do some basic editing of Word and Excel documents from your device, and this comes pre-installed on all Windows Phone devices, and it's a nice little touch to, uh, to not just the Lumia 800, but to all the Windows Phone devices. If you do a lot of editing of documents, if you read a lot of, uh, Word documents or you get a lot of Excel stuff in your email, this could be really beneficial on your device. And the last thing I wanted to cover is personalization options because you do get quite a few uh, in this. You can go to theme and you can change it from dark to light where it lightens up the background. Now obviously this is an AMOLED display so it's optimized for dark colors. So that black screen is going to help you save battery life long term. So I'd recommend keeping it on dark but you can see Nokia Blue is a pre-installed color and then you get the typical Windows Phone things here. Magenta, purple, teal, lime, brown, all the way down 
to green. So you get a couple of different options if Nokia Blue isn't your thing. And then of course you can come in here and change your ringtones. You can turn the ringer on, vibrate on and off, your, your, change your text and IM, change your voicemail, and then play a sound for all of those uh, all of those things there. So all in all, it's a good platform, you know, and it's nice to see Windows Phone 7.5 and Nokia paired together, hardware and software. I'm hoping they can help each other. I'm hoping Nokia can woo in the developers, increase that app catalog, increase that app marketplace, rather. And I'm hoping on the flip side that Microsoft can help Nokia sell more devices in the U.S. because it's all about carrier subsidies in the U.S. And here's to hoping that they can get some of these devices uh, on some carriers in the U.S. Lumia 800, love the build quality. The only thing I actually don't like about this phone is the camera. Everything else, top notch, love the build, love the way it's crafted. I uh, love this up here, the micro USB charging port and the SIM card slot. And just, you know, how it's one piece of, uh, one piece of plastic, if you will. Got your nice buttons over here on the side. It feels good in the hand. Battery life's decent for a smartphone, but the camera is just subpar. But if you can get it and Windows phones your thing, I would I would highly recommend it. But if it's above, you know, five or six hundred dollars unlocked, I would say wait till quarter one. See what we're going to get in the U.S. because Nokia said they were bringing LTE devices, perhaps some uh, more HSPA Plus devices to uh, to the state. So take a look in Q1, and then of course maybe then you could say, well, since they're not bringing a Lumia 800 over, I can get one now. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the Nokia Lumia 800. Stay tuned for some dog fights, some exciting content around this device because I'm pretty excited. It's nice to see Windows Phone paired with some awesome hardware. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're always doing giveaways. We're super cool people. We're fun to follow and we're on there quite a bit. So check us out, facebook.com slash phone dog. Hey, follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron. Let me know what you think about the Lumia 800. If you think this is the savior for Windows phone or you think this is just another Windows phone device that doesn't have a front facing camera, let me know, phone dog underscore Aaron and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. And keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage of the Lumia 800.